Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well and I wanted to bring you my next video. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different. Uh, typically you'd see a video that is from start to finish on how something is made and uh, that's typically how it should be. I'm going to do something a little bit different to where this is going to be more of a salvage uh, video. Uh, what I've got, I've got a column here that was built uh, by my uncle, uh, Uncle Jim. He uh, is a great woodworker, does a fantastic job with furnitures and different things, and uh, got a great shop there at his house. But uh, I was over at his house and uh, he was showing me some things that he had. And this column uh, came up. He was going to make a podium to uh, put books on and uh, things. I think he was building it for his church to put in a Sunday school class, I believe. But um, needless to say, something came about to where he wasn't able to finish it and uh, it wasn't turning out exactly the way he wanted it. So he asked me if I wanted the column just to you know, see if I could do something with it. So uh, this is just going to be a, a salvage video on what I can come up with this column and I hope you like the video. Now let me first warn you, you do not want to use your table saw this way. The only reason I did this is because my miter um, saw is not uh, large enough to be able to cut this. So I very carefully did this, uh, cutting it in smaller pieces, taking my time. I did fast forward it, but um, watching for kickback and being real careful about how I do this. So this is not typical of how you want to use your table saw, but it worked. Except that. Then where it may have been a little bit uneven, I went ahead and sanded it down on my sander to get any of the unevenness down and some of the marks off. I did leave some of the marks just to give it a little bit of character. Then I went ahead and sanded down all the sides of it to get it nice and smooth with the 120 grit. I then took a quarter inch round over bit in my route table and routed over. This is the top of my project. I went ahead and did the uh, outside and the inside of the top to get my hand out of the way. And um, once I got it routed on both sides, it gave me the shape I wanted uh, on the top. This was a nice piece of uh, walnut my uncle gave me too. Uh, it is a scrap piece of walnut that he wasn't going to use or need. So I'm going to use this and uh, cut down some half inch bottoms for my project. And I'm just flipping it over. I got it set at about a half inch and being real careful as I'm ripping it both sides. But um, this was uh, to be able to make my bottom shape of the project. You might see where this is going. Pulled out my hand planer and wanted to do some hand planing on the uneven edges of the walnut to get it nice and smooth and just put some good old fashioned hand work into the wood. No, we're going to sand it with my sander. Uh, it's a whole lot easier and I have nothing against hand people's tools but uh, I got a sander so I'm going to use it. And it worked out pretty good. It's uh, smoothed it down to the, the size I wanted. Then we want to go to the glue up. We take uh, the two pieces that I cut for the bottom. And I've done three sets of these. So I just smear the glue on in between. And one of be, side to be the bottom. The other side is going to be the inside. So the, it's not really sand as well on the inside. But you'll never see it. Um, but once I got them together and clamped them up. Uh, some of the um, squeeze out on it I wasn't too concerned with um, because again this part would be the inside of the project that you'll never see. I just wanted to get a good snug tight uh, fit so uh, it wouldn't uh, have any leaks. I did add a crossbar across the top with the clamp just put some pressure on it just to make sure that it didn't bow up on me and it was nice and flat. Now I take the column that I cut down to different sizes and I line it up against the walnut that uh, I glued together and 
just trying to line it up to make it nice and even as I can with the grains and then trace out around it uh, to get the areas I want to cut to be able to put the bottom uh, on the uh, uh, project I'm making. I'll just take that over to the uh, bandsaw and cut my lines out and get it ready to glue up. So we're getting ready to get it glued up. I flipped it upside down, uh, get a good amount of glue on this because I really want a good tight seal on it and uh, just spread it up real thick. I'm not worried about the squeeze out or wipe it down and, and sand it and then we're going to route some of it too here in just a minute. But I wanted to get a good seal across the top of this. I just want you to take notice too, I spared no expense with my handy dandy weights that I use. Uh, these are a great tool to be able to, to purchase if you'd like. Uh, you could probably find them at most Goodwills. After the glue dried, we took it back to the router and we got a flush trim bit on there. We uh, just wanted to make sure that the walnut was even with that white oak and uh, got it good and squared up together and flush. I thought this was kind of neat. I always have trouble taking my router out and changing bits and um, I'm new to all this so I just figured this out and I'm really tickled with myself but just pushing up my router inside the table, put my wrench under the bottom, take the other wrench across the top and it makes it a whole lot easier because there's a wedge in the bottom that holds that bottom nut. So instead of having to take that thing out every time I actually can change my router bit out in less than a minute where it was taking me 10 minutes to take it out of the table. So it may sound stupid, but I thought it was great. And again, it was under a minute. We're putting in a uh, quarter inch uh, chamfer bit. There. It's a 40 degree angle, a 45 degree angle bit. Once we got that in, we just routed the bottom around the walnut side uh, just to give it a, a little uh, flare across the bottom. Here on this epoxy. <coughs> Instructions say to mix A and B with two equal parts. So I got two cups. I made a little mark on the inside of it. And we're going to mix this up with two equal parts, like it says to do. We're going to get it as equal as we can by going by the guideline that I marked inside the cup. That's A. Let's see if we can get D to the same. And B. That's two equal parts of the same. All right, now the instructions say pour this into A into B. So we'll stir it for four minutes. Oh, check the time, 1.30. So we're gonna stir this up good for four minutes. All right, then it says take after four minutes, pour it into another clean container. Stir that for another four minutes. Now I just want to take and pour this into the, uh, the planters that we're making. This is going to be used to make a nice seal in the bottom and the side insides um, of this. This was a neat trick. The drunken woodworker and uh, I think Steve Ramsey, he had done it as well for their planters. 
but basically is you're just taking that uh, epoxy and then and, and spreading it all on the inside and it gives it a hard shell they say it's like 50 coats of lacquer so but this is just the easy way to do it um, I thought it was pretty neat and it actually went a long way I was very surprised of how, how far it went uh, I had enough left over that after I got the inside of all I just went ahead and coated the whole outside of it too just to give it a good protection so um, it made the the color uh, come out real nice and I, I really liked the way it uh, made the the wormholes inside that white oak kind of pop out this made it look kind of antiquish Well, that was pretty fun, and uh, what I did to make it all into one piece, I just basically took two screws in the lower end here, and then two in the front, and it got it all into one piece. So it, it turned out fairly nice. I like the way it turned out, a little planner, but, oh, I forgot. What would be the planner without the plants? Hope you liked the project this week, and continue to watch. If you like, hit that like button there on the bottom. And to make sure you subscribe to my channel, uh, I'd love to have you come back each week and check out the projects we're doing all back behind me, here, the, under the blanket. Yeah, I'm not going to reveal that right now. That's top secret. Uh, Summer's Woodworking's 2x4 contest, and there's some crazy people running around town right now. So I'm having to be pretty careful about what I say and expose and not name the names. But I got my fire extinguisher ready to go. You know, safety's always first. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and make a comment on the bottom. Any comments, concerns, or outbursts. Don't forget you can follow me on the Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, and all those other fancy sites. How much wood would woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood?